Muslim refugees are dangerous. I know because I've never met one. Tens of thousands of Syrian refugees are definitely, me... in many cases, ISIS aligned. So I've come to the belly of the beast. I know it looks like I'm in Mosul or Raqqa, but I'm actually in a town equally as dangerous. Twin Falls, Idaho. Sites like Breitbart and Drudge and Infowars have told me that there's an insurgent refugee presence here, out for blood, and I'm gonna go find it. Siri, find ISIS. In 2016, a shocking story came to light. Championed by Breitbart's lead investigative reporter, Lee Stranahan, headlines from across conservative websites claimed that three Syrian refugees with ties to terrorism had gang-raped a five-year-old at knife point in rural Idaho. So I'm in Twin Falls to file a story about the terror of marauding refugees. The discussions of terror of uh, marauding refugees in Twin Falls is so blown out of proportion, I, I can't even hardly describe it. Why should I believe you, a person who lives here all the time, over myself, who has read things on the internet? But Mr. Stranahan was connecting dots that really had no business being connected. But I'm confused. Breitbart indicated that this case involved a knife. And their lead investigative reporter, Lee Stranahan's article said, gang rape, Sharia law, Syrians, even ISIS. Seems irrefutable to me. Prosecutor addressed the rumors going around on social media. The incident was not a gang rape. The assailants were not Syrian, and the assault did not happen at knife point. That's all absurd. If they were Syrians, I would tell you they're Syrians, but it bothers me if it's not true. Just because his office prosecuted the case doesn't mean he knows anything about the case. And who cares what the New York Times, the Washington Post, and several Idaho news outlets debunked? I'd seen this on sites I trusted. There had to be Syrians lurking in Twin Falls somewhere. We have not resettled any Syrian in, in Twin Falls as of now. It's zero, Syrian. I was reading an article by Lee Stranahan in Breitbart, and he doesn't agree with you, sir. He did not meet with the experts on refugees. It seems like um, he had an agenda. A refugee is a victim of terrorism. You're not really helping me tell the story I need to tell, so I just want you to repeat after me. Uh, refugees are not criminals. Oh, refugees are not criminals. Great. Now, can you just tighten that up, throw out the knot? I can't get anyone to give me the answers I want. Why? The court sealed it to protect the victim and the suspects in this case because of their age. It was investigated. The young men were prosecuted and sentenced. So there was an assault. According to the New York Times, a seven-year-old boy was accused of attempting some kind of sex act with a five-year-old girl. And a 10-year-old boy allegedly used a cell phone borrowed from his older brother to record it. But apparently, the case was sealed because it involved juveniles so prosecutors and police are barred from discussing certain details in sealed juvenile cases. But Stranahan and his boss Steve Bannon knew it was less likely that officials were respecting the privacy of children and more likely that this was a global conspiracy. I want to go out now to, uh, to uh, Twin Falls, Idaho to Lee Stranahan. The situation since it's happened has been hushed up. Is the mayor of Idaho a big, you know, Sharia supporter? That's what we're out here on the ground getting to. Wow, Stranahan was shrewd enough to see that this was a classic small town Sharia supporting mayor cover-up. And he heroically confronted the city council about the case. My name is Lee Stranahan. I'm a uh, lead investigative journalist with Breitbart News. You're a city official, sir. You made statements that were just read that were not true, sir. It was turned into this conspiracy theory to prove a point that refugees were inherently dangerous, that Muslims were inherently dangerous. Maybe a conspiracy of truth. I think that there are legitimate concerns that people in Twin Falls have. There's a wave of Islamic terrorism. We're seeing it every few days now. And this helped drive the totally reasonable national conversation about whether Muslim immigrants belong in America at all. From Twin Falls, there's hundreds of them in the town. They're going to Islamify this area. We have to be careful who we let in this country. You've seen what's going on in Europe. And it's not just about terrorists. This is about the rape statistics that have gone on there. Mr. Stranahan's just rightfully afraid of refugees. So don't the ends justify the means here? Not at all. My wife and I both received death threats. Recently, a woman, member of parliament, she met with opposition in the form of a bullet to the head. She's dead now. They buried her. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. What a polite death threat. 
The article even inspired Russian trolls to get involved, organizing anti-immigration rallies in Twin Falls to stir up trouble. And all of this coverage was happening during the 2016 election and fueled voters' fears that Muslim immigrants really were as dangerous as Trump said. This is absolutely the best reporting I've seen in my life. Alt journalists took a local crime and used it to mobilize a national conversation about a completely unrelated issue. People call it fake news, but these citizen journalists were able to cause real world chaos. How could I learn to make high impact journalism like this? Then I found my solution. Hi there, my name is Lee Stranahan. There's a reason I've gotten story after story after story right when everybody else got it wrong. I believe in bravery. That's why I started citizen journalism school. Click right now and we'll see you on the inside. That's right. The expert journalist behind the Twin Falls story runs his own citizen journalism school. While most of his school is online, he was having a weekend intensive in Washington, D.C. So I paid $200 and signed up. And here I am to learn from the man himself, Lee Stranahan. Unfortunately, Stranahan wasn't as happy to see me as I was to see him. Soon after I left Citizen Journalism School, he posted this. Kobe, sorry dude, you're busted. You gotta understand, I'm not afraid of you. He's not afraid of me, and I'm only slightly afraid of him. Find out if I become more afraid tomorrow on The Opposition.